hi this is shadi and today we're gonna be looking at some edo period manga illustrations so manga illustrations date back centuries ago during my podcast with kotaro sasaki he mentions that the first ever manga was done with a shodo brush or a calligraphy brush so today we're gonna be looking at some depictions of sumo techniques and jujitsu um, self-defense slash arresting uh, techniques way before Kodokan Judo and way before the Meiji Restoration. So these illustrations can be found in this book, Jiu-Jitsu Manual, uh, translated by Eric Shahan. This is the third volume where he combines a few books and um, this one here we're going to be focusing mainly on the manga illustration part. So a little bit about the artist. It's his, his name is Katsushika Hakusai, born 1760, died 1849. So even before the Meiji Restoration, Kodokan Judo, we're going to see some very interesting techniques that transition very much into today's uh, world. This is a self-portrait made by the artist himself. So the first volume is going to be about sumo and particularly brawling. So here you can see uh, the fishermen, uh, the guys fighting on the street. And the first one here that I want to showcase is the grip fighting, how they entangle the arms, the over and the under. One is trying to dominate the other. Uh, look, he is trying to get on top of him and put him in a very compromised uh, position. So uh, over, under hooks, clinching, etc. In sumo and jiu-jitsu is nothing new. So uh, in Nage no Kata actually dedicated a technique in order to showcase this old type of gripping. So this is Kosei in a way demonstrating sumigaishi in Nage no Kata. You can see the low stance and you can see the over and under hook. The Kodokan explains that this is to reflect on old jiu-jitsu type gripping, the self-defense stance and also the close range when it comes to gripping. So very much different of the um, range of grip fighting that we do today, the sleeve lapel, the Russian arm, the Georgian arms, all this stuff, the belt grips. So speaking of belt grips, the next one is of course your belt grip. So uh, notice how he has a very strong overhook with his left arm and with his right arm, he's pulling on the belt so he can not only uh, destroy his opponent's posture, but also immobilize him with the overhook and thus throwing them on the ground is very much uh, an easy task. Here you can see another one depicting almost the same thing, but he has more of a shoulder or tricep grip. But notice his opponent's posture. It is completely you know, compromised and he is hunched over and when you are in this position, it's very hard to attack, especially when someone is gripping you. Not like wrestling where you can just uh, cup and do things and just go for the legs. Well, if someone's gripping you with clothing, it's much harder. So here you can see Sumigayashi being done differently, um, not with the over and under. Here you are gripping down the back or down the belt. I know Sumigayashi is great for belt grips and you compromise your opponent's posture here you can see them they are hunched over you attack with sumigaishi and put them down for a pawn so um it's very interesting to see the multiple types of gripping um from your naked grappling into the stuff that we can see today uh, in sumo and of course judo now let's transition more into torite or arresting techniques uh, against a sword someone is trying to attack with a sword so a lot of these open hand techniques that you see with grappling they can be done with um weapons so for example the elbow lock the arm lock while standing up here you can see one is on the tricep and one is on the elbow to pin and immobilize and render the arm that's holding the sword useless it also can be done when someone is gripping you normally without any weapon. So this is what I really like about jujitsu, Aikido, Aiki jujitsu is that a lot of the open hand techniques translates well into the weapon uh, techniques. Uh, here, for example, a shihonage being done against someone attacking with a sword. Um, this is a great concept demonstrating that um, the line of attack whatever it may be um, with weapons or not you can still apply the same principles and apply the same technique um, the next one here is you can see him gripping the garment of the man and the man is locking his elbow uh, tight and also putting him down um, you can progressively walk through in 
into putting them belly down. Um, this is what is called Ikkyo in uh, Aikido or the first technique ever that you will learn. Um, it's a very important technique, especially for arrest and putting someone belly down to render them uh, harmless in case of uh, you know, resisting arrest. So here, he's gripping and he's still gripping. Um, the idea behind this, I explained this in my Kempo video, that um, usually they would go for the sword or the knife or the um, bat or the club of the officer. And thus, when they grip and the officer starts to demonstrate the technique, they don't let go because... If they do let go, they're going to be in a very bad position while the other ha not only has a weapon but also a dominant position over them. So it's best to stay uh, gripping when someone is holding a weapon rather than to just let go. So it's not like hold my hand so I can do the technique as many people would think. Um, the next one here is very interesting. Um, is it a kataguruma? I'm not entirely sure but you can see the attacker. He has his arms completely stretched out and the sword strike uh, really committed um, the showman uchi over the top of the head. I would say he's going for the leg and going for a drop kataguruma where he changes his level and takes the momentum of the sword strike and the forward momentum into throwing them with kata uh, guruma. Kata guruma can be done in various ways. It can be done with like a double leg grip. It can be done standing up. It can be done on one knee, on two knees. Uh, it's a very flexible throw as long as you wield them over your shoulders. It is technically kata guruma. So even when you sacrifice yourself backwards, people would think it's uranage. Not necessarily. It can be also considered kata guruma as long as they are wheeled off the shoulders. So let's take a look at a kata guruma being done with a level change. So here the guy is coming forward you go down grab the leg on one knee very much similar to the illustration and then you wheel them over your shoulders so this is a very uh, famous example where uh, Kano changed level against a sumo wrestler and he took him down for kata guruma using timing and of course grappling intelligence so kata guruma is not only done standing up standing up can be very challenging especially if there's size difference and the last one is very interesting. It's an arrest technique. Notice how as he is preparing his rope to conduct the arrest, notice how the leg is entangled with the arm in a like a omoplata position or a shoulder lock position. This is, I would say, an ashigitame leg hold. And it can pin the shoulder and it can lock it and also injure it. Um, it's very nice to like hold a submission as you are preparing the rope for the arrest. So, omoplata is being done with the leg. Uh, this is not the first example or the only example of uh, you know locking shoulder while you are standing up to prepare for something else. So, um, this is a jaw technique being demonstrated here with Aikido. Someone's uh, committing to taking it from you, and then you take them down. And here you lock the shoulder with uh, the staff or the jaw and you stay standing up maybe to call for support or to call for uh, or to just conduct the arrest. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only, but mostly my main content will be here on this channel. So please don't feel obliged, but your support would mean greatly. Also, don't forget to check out Eric Shahan's books in the description below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.